Hello friends, good afternoon to a few and good evening to others. Welcome to the STP training webinar series. The topic for today is exploring a DevOps transformation like a tester. Our speaker for the day is Parveen Khan. I'm Smita Mishra. I'm a tester myself and a sustainability enthusiast too. And I'm super excited today to host you all and Parveen Khan on our webinars. And let me start the webinar by giving you some goodies. We are already working towards our next conference, Spring 2020 STP Con, which is coming up at San Diego from March 30th to April the 2nd. Partial program is published with the keynotes and the workshop details, and we shall be publishing the full program very soon. So the Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales are on, and you can save to $500 on your registrations if it is done by the 2nd of December, which means uh, about two weeks from now. Teams and alumni registrations can save even more. For any further queries with respect to sponsoring, attending or team registrations or anything in general, just send an email to info at softwaretestpro.com. And uh, as you're aware, we do these community webinars twice a month and have been bringing in the best of the speakers for you. So far, we generally research the speakers and pick them for you, but not anymore. For the coming year, 2020, we have stepped up our game and we are now inviting proposals from all of you to speak on our webinars. The good part is this shall be open all year round, so you can submit anytime you are ready. But we will begin filling the slots as soon as we come across meaningful content and inspiring speakers. To be considered for the first quarter, starting January, do send in your proposals ASAP. And all the details along with the submission form are at the link given on the screen. Please go through them. And also, should you need mentoring on presenting or have other general queries, please reach out to us again at the email info at softwaretestpro.com. Uh, we do have a pool of senior speakers. We're always happy to support on reviewing, especially if this is the first time you're proposing. Uh, in case you have recommendations on topics or speakers, do email them to us. We'll be happy to hear from you. Also, let me quickly tell you, there is an upcoming webinar, uh, Making Products That Matter, Value-Driven Development in Practice, on 11th of December. The speaker is Marcel Quackernack, who is a QA, Agile, and DevOps consultant at Shell. In this talk, he will discuss how value-driven teams operate and build products that will actually get used. The link is up for you to register. Please do go for it. And if you are on Twitter, please share the conference and call for papers information and also about this webinar with your followers, connections. Uh, you can add STP's Twitter handle to your tweets, which is at Software Test Pro. Uh, you can also note down Twitter handle for our speaker today, which is at Parveen underscore Khan one zero and definitely put the hashtag STP webinar. All right, let's get started with the webinar today. Welcome, Parveen. We are very excited to have you with us today. And let me quickly introduce you for all of us here. Parveen Khan is a senior test engineer at Square Marble Technology. She's very passionate about testing and very keen on learning new things. So she can use them in testing and deliver better quality. She's always interested in sharing her testing lessons learned and experiences in the form of stories and also likes to brainstorm and bounce ideas by having deep diving conversations. She's gone from being a solo test advocate to building up a, a team of four testers. She has been part of few transitions from waterfall to agile, agile to DevOps, from testing on monolith to microservices architecture and Apart from work, Parveen is a super mom of two lovely kids. So I've definitely been hearing a lot about your work, Parveen. So let's get started with exploring the DevOps transformation like a tester. The floor is all yours. Hello, everyone. Good morning and good afternoon for everyone, whoever is in whatever time zone you are. And let's get started. So uh, as Smita has already introduced me, Thank you for the great introduction. And yeah, uh, so quick, small agenda for my topic today. As you all know, I'm going to talk about exploring a DevOps transformation like a tester. 
So my quick agenda is I'll give you some context before my uh, before sharing my journey, and then I'll quickly jump on to my journey. And guys, don't don't forget to put your seat belts on, everyone. And at the end, I'll share some of the key takeaways uh, out of my journey. So when I start, the first question I would like like to ask everyone is. As a tester, how do you adapt when a new technology or a process is introduced within your team? What do you try to do? How do you try to um, uh, approach it? Do you try to research about it to find what exactly that that to, th that new technology or a new process is all about by yourself, or do you really accept it as a challenge and then try your own ways by uh, find trying to find it in your own in your own way, or do you try to reach out to the community to find out how they try to approach uh, the similar problem and how they re try to resolve this? I was in the similar situation when uh, my team decided to adopt continuous integration as a first step uh, to for us to transition into DevOps. So to give you a bit of a context. Uh, it was quite a while. We were the same team. We transitioned from waterfall to agile. It was uh, we kind of. It was a new. It was an, an again a new challenge for us during the transition from waterfall to agile, and we kind of took baby steps, evolved slowly, and embraced the change. We were quite very happy, and we were, we were quite very comfortable, comfortably settled in a way we were working. We came from testing in a silo, and testing is just the tester's responsibility to testing his whole th whole team responsibility. We yeah, so we were quite happy, and just when we were happy that we went through all those challenges and had to learn all about agile and transitioned into agile, now it was a new challenge, and that challenge was uh, transitioning into DevOps. For me, it was introduction to the world of pipelines all new world of the new pipelines and yeah i mean as a tester we always like new challenges because i think that we get to explore something new we also get to apply a different mindset to find some of the issues and also i think it allows us in experimenting new ideas so we always like new challenges right this was challenging for me and uh, it, I was very, very interested in this new challenge. And and because the reason why it is challenging for me was like I had to understand the new way of how testing would fit into these pipelines. Yes, I was ready. It was challenging. I was happy. But at the same time, I was a bit scared. Even though I was very happy that I have another new challenge to work for, I was still scared and nervous. I had this feeling straight away. But why I was, I mean, just now I said I was very challenged. Then why I was not feeling excited about it and motivated about it to try something new and why I was uh, nervous or scared. Why Why did I have this kind of feeling? So I tried to uh, question myself, try to understand why I'm feeling very scared. And then, and then I thought it's really simple, right? Like when you don't know about something, you feel scared and doubtful about it. So I got my answer, at least an answer about why, some, some part of answer about why I'm feeling scared. So I don't know about this new change, about this new challenge. I don't know anything about that. That's the reason why I was scared. OK, fine. So for me, then I decided I started to explore by reading more about DevOps, more about continuous integration, more about all these pipelines to understand so that I can get away uh, my scare. It wasn't surprising for me that the more I was reading about it, the more I was confused. And I was all new for this, so I had loads of questions and doubts. And then I decided I will try to take an approach just like, you know, when you uh, start to test a new feature or maybe when you start working on completely new product or completely new application. What do we do usually as a tester? What do we usually do in those kind of situations? We try to explore, to learn about it. We kind of 
we ask questions, right? We we ask various questions to various team members, like maybe developers, BAs, product owners, or anyone working on that, uh, anyone working on that product. We try to ask those questions to clarify our assumptions and to get to know more about the application, right? So, so I thought instead of researching more about it by myself, let me explore and question each of these. So, so I started with my first question. Why DevOps? Because I was very curious to know why are we having it in first place before even trying to understand what is DevOps. I wanted to understand why are we having this DevOps in first place? And, and you know, like as a tester, we are always curious to know things. So this is this was my first question. I got a few reasons um, from my team that why we are having the some of the reasons like why we are having these transition first in place. So the first reason uh, I got was we were moving from monolith to microservices architecture. So we had our product which was built in monolith architecture. So we were trying to rebuild it uh, by breaking down into different modules. So we thought microservices is a better architecture. So we were building it from scratch. So our team wanted to merge their code very frequently with, uh, with more confidence. So this, this, is the, this was the first reason. Again, I'm not saying that if you're going for microservices, uh, if we, that's the reason why, that is the only reason why we wanted to have DevOps or anyone should go for DevOps, but this was our own reason. And our first step towards DevOps was to start with one aspect like continuous integration um, as a first step. Okay, I got one reason, fine. And the second reason was, of course, there was a need for a speed, like for faster and early feedback to know right away if there were any issues, like because it was built from the scratch. We wanted to deliver the features to customers or the users fairly quickly. And the only way to do that was we could do, we could do it, uh, we could merge the code very frequently. So this was another reason. Okay, fine. And of course, the third reason was it was one of the one of the new shiny buzzword going around. So even we wanted to look cool by adopting this new shiny thing. Fine. Now I got the reasons about why we are having this DevOps. Like I got the goal, like from I, my team, to understand what the goal is behind going into the DevOps. And the next question for me was, what is DevOps? So. I wanted to understand. <laughs> yes, of course, anyone. You know what would you do if you get to, uh, if you get a new term? You just go to Google and you find what exactly the definition is, right? So I did the same thing because I wanted to um, understand what DevOps is. Uh, so I came across a lot of definitions. So this one is from Wikipedia. Like it's a very uh, long one. <laughs> yeah. So. It says that DevOps is the combination of cultural philosophies, practices, and tools that increases an organization's ability to deliver applications and services at high velocity. So evolving and improving the product at faster pace than, you know, than the traditional way. So I got this definition from Wikipedia, which I quite liked. So I thought I'll share this. Okay, I, this, was, this was a big definition for me, fine. Now, for me, even though I didn't understand enough, I was like, OK, I got the definition. Fine. Next question for me was to was to understand what is continuous integration, because this is what we wanted to start with. So again, the same way I came across a lot of definitions, but one of the definition was from Martin Fowler, which was Continuous integration is a software development practice where members of a team integrate their work frequently. Usually, each person integrates at least daily. Each integration is verified by an automated build to detect integration errors as quickly as possible. OK, I got the definition, but it was black and white for me still because I, did, I, I, came, I didn't understand enough. So then I came across this image, which like, you know, I, I'm very uh, a big fan of like looking things into the image form. So I came across this and then I got a little bit clarity. OK, I quite kind of understand what continuous integration means from the theory point of view. It was still theory for me. So 
at this point i was a bit motivated to um understand more and explore more and obviously once i got a bit of understanding of this i had some more questions uh i had some more questions which was what does what does it bring to my world of testing how would it affect my current testing process and what do i have to change uh, and the most important thing was what benefits do these pipelines get to me and what do they look like yeah i have i hear this uh, a lot and what do they look like so every day i could hear a lot of new words from my team like docker like pipelines feature toggles docker shift left i mean i was trying to understand things yet and i would i would still hear all new words each day before even i try to understand one concept so while we were all trying to understand whole all these new concepts about devops continuous integration and what tools do we need how would our process look like while trying to do so we all ended up having our own discussions among ourselves like for example uh, my front end team they went ahead they tried to find out their own solution they tried to find out their own tools what they want they tried to have the discussions among their own team like front end team and the back end team they went ahead and they tried to figure out what they want how to how, uh, what kind of tool they want um they tried to have discussions among them and we as a testers we had our discussions among them we were so busy to learn these that we forgot uh, we forgot something so i said i had to give this shout out like did did we really forget something yes we forgot to collaborate because we all devops is not all about like going uh, and for trying to find out what tool do you need for themselves it is about trying to collaborate with with everyone like it's not about front end team back end team or testers it's about everyone trying to work out together and trying to find which tool we all need which tools do we all need what kind of process do we all need and how it would impact each other so it was good it was not a bad shout which i had to give everyone and this was exactly the uh, outcome of it like they exactly gave this expression because it was not conscious it was not deliberate we all forgot something so it was they needed we all needed just one shout out so it was it and we all then decided okay we will collaborate now on we will not go in a silo so one challenge sorted fine the next challenge was um i was told that it was too technical for me to be in, be part of most of the meetings and yeah the main reason uh, i was not being part of those meetings is like i'm it's too technical for me and i will be overwhelmed if i'm being in that meeting so i was not invited for that meeting but then um the only way i was able to resolve this uh, this, this problem was by self inviting myself to those meetings and actively listening in those meetings even though i may i might not give uh, input of straight away but i might be actively listening into those meetings and i might ask some important questions if, uh, whether from testing point of view or from the whole product point of view and most of the meetings were about discussing the tools or like you know uh, what kind of uh, process we are going to include so uh, so by doing so by self inviting myself and being part of those meetings uh, i i just it was good that it was not immediate uh, solution it was not uh, immediately they understood what is the importance of me being in those meetings but slowly they tried to understand they tried to understand why i need to be there they they were okay with it slowly because and because the main reason i gave was if i am not being part of those meetings how can we shift left because we always say with devops shift left if you're not including me being uh, if you're not including me in those meetings uh, where the important discussions or decisions are being made i would not know the context behind those decisions and have to be there if i'm not there then i just questions that, question them that how are we even shifting left if i'm not being very uh, involved very early on so the problem was solved anyways i was uh, 
initially i had to self invite but slowly i was uh, i was being invited to most of the meetings even though i straight away had to not give any self uh, inputs or feedback fine it was uh, it was by these two situations the good thing was that we all as a team understood that collaboration is very important um, among us for making any decisions about tools or processes and we decided that okay let's try to work together uncover the facts together and let's try to under, uh, understand all of our devops and continuous integration so okay until now whatever i know it was still um, very not so very clear for me i still had to understand a lot this is just me, uh, me coming into the uh, coming in understanding devops understanding continuous integration having the collaboration now for me the next part was I really wanted to visualize those pipelines because it was all about pipelines. I wanted to understand. I wanted to understand by visualizing them. So I just went to my team and I said, can we please visualize those pipelines so I can understand what goes in, what do what those stages look like and what are those stages? So they really agreed and we spent a um, whole day around discussion um, about these pipelines and we came up with our very first design of the pipeline on the, this, the whole white board. So it, it looked something like this. This was our very first pipeline uh, of how much we understood as a team because we all were new. So this was a pipeline of whatever we understood. So we came together and we designed this uh, out of our own understanding. It was, so it looked like this, like, okay, static code analysis, unit testing, integration testing, contract driven testing, API testing. Okay, this is a pipeline with all these stages. It made it made very uh, clear to me, like these are the stages and this is how the pipeline look like, fine. I saw that, it was good. I got more confidence. I got more motivated to understand more. I had few more questions after after seeing those pipelines. Because um, I still had quite a lot of unknown unknowns. So I had questions like, what are those stages? Like, yeah, I can see those stages on the pipeline, but what are those stages? Who defines those stages? And who defines what should go in the pipeline and when? Will I, as a tester, have any place to suggest something what should go on that pipeline? And the biggest question for me was like, will there be no manual testing? It could be anything like it do we have no exploratory testing at all in the devops world will it everything be automation so after all these questions um like we all came back together again we we came back again and again out of understanding and design our own pipeline so you will see a lot of different versions of different pipelines so after a little bit of more understanding we came back again and we decide we decided to go for two different pipelines, two different stages, pre-deploy pipeline. And the next one is post-deploy. So in the pre-deploy pipeline, we said we'll have only two stages, which is static code analysis and unit testing. And only if these two, two stages passes, then we go for the next stage, which was post-deploy pipeline. And on this pipeline, we would have integration tests, contract driven trust, API test and smoke test. Fine. Uh, I could see two different stages now. After one, it was now two pipelines, two different stages. I even had this doubt that why do we have this post-deploy and pre-deploy? I didn't understand these terms. And only answer I got from my team was because uh, the post-deploy, pre-deploy test doesn't need any environment. We can run it locally. So that's the reason why we call it as pre. And this, these are the tests which uh, this is the reason why we call it as post. So, okay. I didn't quite understand but still i was okay fine because i knew we were still learning and we are going to evolve so i decided i wanted to explore these pipelines to understand each of these pipelines so i wanted to explore a pre-deploy pipeline so i never came um i never i never came across static code analysis uh, before i knew unit testing but i never uh, i mean we never did any static code analysis so we used Sonacube for for performing the static code analysis. 
um and then i try to understand i try to learn what this exactly does what why do we have static code analysis so what i understood is it is something um to do with code quality it does some uh, automated code review it kind of detects some bugs or some kind of vulnerabilities and some kind of code smells in the code okay i got to learn this um what exactly this is so that i can understand I can, um, the reason why I wanted to understand is because, so that I can see what what use would it get. And it was really good that uh, because we were, uh, we were uh, trying these new things, we were trying to build our POCs, okay, proof of concepts. So we, I got to see what exactly it gives, like what kind of report do I get? So I could see that it would give me different kind of coverage, unit tests, uh, some kind of bugs and some kind of smokes, uh, uh, smells, code smells. I could see uh, the report very clearly, which was, um, which gave me a bit more clarity about why we, do we have this static code analysis and what does it give. And I could just check these reports if I need, uh, if I want to see what's the coverage and what are the code smells, and I can ask questions based on those reports, which was good. Okay, fine. And the next step for me was once I explored the pre-deploy pipeline, I wanted to explore the post-deploy pipeline and see what exactly, what kind of stages do we have on this. Um, so we had um, we had integration test, contract driven test, and API test on this. I was very familiar with um, integration test, contract driven test was completely new was completely new to me so uh, it was new to me because we had those tests because we were uh, working in microservices architecture so we kind of wanted to have these tests along with the api test fine um uh, sorry it's a bit um yeah so because uh, we created all these proof of concepts, we got some kind of hands-on experience on these new tools, new ways of working, new ways of developing or testing. Even though we don't understand completely, but at least we could see a few things. So we gained more confidence. We got better understanding about these concepts. As a team, uh, I think as a team, we started with knowing very little, nothing, actually knowing nothing to very little. And we all as a team had similar challenges and we all had the same goal to understand the overall concept. OK, so it is possible that each member of the team uh, knows or understands particular part of the overall concept. So by sharing what each of us knows, uh, we kind of try to build our own picture from everyone's own perspective. Like if you see this picture, it's, a, it's something like this. We had to answer why, what, and how of continuous integration and DevOps. We all came together and built our own picture in the form of all these pipelines and the processes. So at the end, we ended up having our own single pipeline. After getting better understanding, we decided we'll start with this pipeline and we go, we'll go ahead and we'll try to improve. We, uh, we, we wanted to improve on it. So we decided at the end that we'll have one single pipeline with static code analysis, unit testing, integration tests, and contract driven test, API test, and mini regression test at the end as a part of the pipeline. And the reason why I suggested to have a mini regression test instead of having running the full regression test on the pipeline is because it was a combination of a smoke test or you call it as a sanity checks plus some of the important regression checks so that's the reason why i call it as a mini regression test and the reason why uh, i added this is because i wanted to uh, take small steps i didn't want it to add a large amount of tests and wait for three or four hours. Instead, I wanted to, because it's all about quick feedback, right? So I wanted to see how it runs, how it works, how long does it take? And slowly I wanted to build up on that. And I slowly wanted to add more tests to it. So that is the reason why I started with a mini regression test. So, and full regression test, we initially started off um, by running those full regression tests at the, every day in the night as a nightly build task. And 
each morning I could review the reports and I, if there are any bugs, uh, I could just raise them. The difference was that I could add the bill number while raising the issue if there was a failure, right? right? Uh, because it was easy for a developer to find the root cause based on the bill number. I'm not saying that it's, it gives you the exact way the issue is, but it's just that instead of find, trying to find the uh, needle from the haystack, it's like you know which part of the haystack you need to find the needle from. So it ju it's just they give some kind of easiness. So all this could mean that all these type of tests being added to the pipeline meant that uh, I get to use my time, spend my time more in exploratory testing. Yes, and this was my answer. The, uh, this is what answer I got. Yes, we still had uh, manual testing as part of our DevOps uh, and as part, part of our testing strategy. So I was very happy that I could uh, I could still spend more and more time in uh, performing exploratory testing and finding more edge cases and trying to uh, use the application uh, without any following any test cases or test scenarios or any test scripts. I used to follow it as having some test charters and having some sessions on it. So I could spend more time uh, in performing these tasks. So these were some of the tools which we used. Um, these are just few of them, like uh, database and Docker and Selenium for our automation, Slack for our communication, so and Sonacube for static code analysis. These are some, just few of the tools which I tried to list it over here. So I think um, while we try to continue, while we continue to improve ourselves and understand more about continuous integration, we were moving forward and making more improvements to the pipeline. It was not just that we decided to go with this pipeline and that's it. No, we were trying to uh, learn and move forward and we were trying to make more and more improvements to that. So as I said, this was just the this was just the part one, like just the beginning uh, of our journey. We started to define after understanding all these, uh, we started to define our long term goals. So our long long term goals were something like we wanted to add full regression tests as part of our uh, pipeline. We wanted to add visual tests as a part of our pipeline. We wanted to add performance testing and also security testing. And at the end, like we wanted to have like good monitoring tools and a dashboard which can show everything what's going on. And once we have these things well understood and have one uh, have better understanding and we were all as a team comfortable with, we would wanted to go further with continuous deployment. So we wanted to take one step at a time. So that's the reason why we kind of defined a future vision or a future goal of what or how uh, we wanted to approach uh, our next step as. So this is um, this is still kind of a journey for me, as we know. Like um, as you as we've seen, I've kind of faced different kind of challenges as we as we progress. And as you might have seen, like uh, um, I really like reading uh, books of Jess Humble about. Uh, continuous deployment, continuous uh, deployment and delivery. So he says that DevOps is not a goal. Uh, it's a never ending process of continuous improvement. So we treat, we took this very seriously and we we worked on this like it's a we try to improve very continuously based on what problems we are facing among the team and how. So we kind of uh, started off with continuous integration and build our goal. And then we were moving forward. So it was that's the reason why I say like it was still it is still a journey for me. It's it's not uh, it's not an end to the journey. I'm still learning. So basically, I came a long way, but it's a still long way to go. I still have to learn a lot. I still have to understand how like different things fit into like into these pipelines or how I would fit fit continuous testing into DevOps and how I can implement observability at the end once I get hands on with all these things. So my role became more of a strategic one rather than just being like only only kind of a tester. And out of all this journey, I had few key takeaways to summarize what I gained from this transition. The first thing was it's OK to feel scared. I had this feeling initially that I was very scared. 
it's okay to feel scared because it's it's very real and a challenging feeling i overcame this by trying to question trying to ask why and what is firstly what is making me feel scared and then trying to uh, get away with this fear and i got my team support to get this uh, fear off and that's the reason why i say it's very it's okay to feel scared and visualizing those pipelines it really helps it really helped me like when we all as a team came together to define and design those pipelines what would go on those pipelines and why would we have those stages questioning and trying to come up with our own uh, kind of pipeline because there's no nothing like you need to have like a very uh, perfect pipeline or is there something like you you have to follow something it's your own uh, way of how you want to decide decide or design as a team so visualizing those pipelines really really helped me and the most thing was it's okay to not know few things when you are starting uh, to work on a new challenge or a new journey or or trying to work on something some new tool i didn't knew anything but i think um i tried to approach it in a way to explore and question everything and try to get help from my team from uh from my test community from my friends and anyone so it's really okay to not know uh before even you start something questioning questioning everything helps because um people will assume that uh you know this stuff if you don't question and say that you don't know this um it it clarifies your it 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 clarifies your assumptions and the other team members assumptions as well as you'll you'll try to get more and more clarity about what you're trying to work on and the next is explore i tried to explore this whole um world of pipelines and the whole new world of devops i wanted to explore and understand by uh seeing what exactly this is and what does it get to my world of testing and trust and collaboration trust and collaboration is not just needed when you are like trying to transition when you're new or when you're trying to uh, like understand the concepts it's not just needed at that point it's needed throughout like you like we as a team we have we we struggled initially to uh, we had trust but we struggled initially to have those collaboration but slowly when we realized when we want when we realized that we uh, have no collaboration within our team we slowly build it up on that so we all as a team worked uh, on trust and collaboration so these are few of the resources um, which i tried to use while i was trying to research uh, to find trying to find out about about continuous integration and devops and everything all about the pipelines and not just these resources but also as i mentioned that like, like i'm part of a different number of group the slack channels like women in testing ministry of testing techwell and yeah twitter is my friend too like i just if i just went ahead and asked my questions to find different answers and just different uh, views and just from different perspective on these so yeah uh, these were some of the useful resources and to end with i would say it was it's about the journey and it's not about the destination i really feel that uh, it is very important it was very uh, important for me to be part of that journey and learn and be a valuable uh, part of the team as a tester because when it comes to devops um people say that oh there's no space for tester or only automation and all that stuff but i really felt very more valuable being part of my team during this transition so i think this is the reason why i really feel for this like it's about the journey and not the destination and yeah thank you very much for listening to my story and you can find me on twitter or linkedin so yeah thank you thank you parveen uh it was a very insightful session on devops transformation especially from uh, testers perspectives so thank you for that. We do have a couple of questions for you. So our first question is, how did you execute integration testing, contract-driven testing, sorry, contract testing, I believe, uh, and API testing? Uh, not all one can do manually. You might have used some tools. 
for automation or something? Yeah. So um, all those tests which were on the pipeline were automated. Like for integration, yeah, our developers they used um, uh, they used Jest or uh, something. Yeah, they used that for their integration test, which they used to write it. And for uh, contract driven testing, we used Pact uh, as our tool. And again, I didn't write those tests, but our developers, we used to collaborate together and we used to write, uh, I used to be part of just the, uh, what tests we need uh, are going in, but we used Pact for that. And for API, we used, uh, uh, we used Selenium as a tool for automating those tests. And um, yeah, it was part of myself and thought we had an automation engineer. So we worked together to build those tests. So. These were the tools which we used. Thanks, Parveen. Um, and there one is uh, pretty similar on the line, but asking what kind of performance and security tools that your team used? So yeah, this was based on the long-term goal, but um, we still, dis that, that's the reason why I said that's well, that was something to do with the next step, because still we are trying to uh, get our hands on very, uh, with the existing tests which we have, like getting good coverage, getting the end-to-end -end test to our pipeline, and a bit of um, cross-browser testing as well. So we are still working on that. So we still uh, didn't decide on what kind of uh, tools we'll be using for um, performance and security because that was something part of our long-term goal, which we are still working on, which um, once we get to that, maybe when, then that's where we will decide which tool to use. So yeah, we didn't decide it yet. We didn't get there yet. Uh, that makes sense. So uh, another one is, how many developers and testers were in the team? So we were uh, we were three testers, like uh, uh, one automation dedicated tester, and we were both involved everywhere, other testers. And developers were almost around eight developers, I think, yeah front-end and back-end developers and we had a product owner we we did not have uh, had any like dedicated devops team or anything like that so we used to have because um we were still trying to understand and learn together so we were more uh, sharing our own responsibilities together so we didn't have any dedicated devops team uh, separately sitting and helping us but we all uh, were working together in it which was good i think because uh, we we got to learn a lot and understand the pain points of uh, what it gets like. So yeah, this was our team. Um, so quickly, uh, Parveen, uh, I think you said that uh, there's a follow-up question on the previous one where you probably mentioned a couple of uh, tools and uh, mm -hmm. uh, they needed the spelling of it. Is it PACT, P-A-C-T? Yeah, P-A-C-T, PACT. Okay, great. Um, the next question is, what methodology have you been following Scrum, Kanban, any of them? Yeah, we used to follow uh, Scrum. Uh, initially, when we were trying to research about things, it was more uh, not following anything because we wanted to research about stuff and build some proof of concepts. And then once we were, uh, like, once we were stable enough, that's where we started to follow Scrum. Thank you. And, and we, uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, please. And yeah, we had uh, all the agile ceremonies. We kind of uh, wanted to slowly see how things work and then we wanted to follow. Uh, uh, so we just followed Scrum. Okay. Um, the next question is What kind of inputs did you give to the team? In the very initial phase of transformation, um, I think uh, all my inputs initially were in the form of questions, which were like trying to question most of the stuff, even which they didn't think about, like if they would choose uh, some kind of tool. So my questions would be like, why would we choose this tool, or how would it impact? testing or anything like within our team or what would I ben would be beneficial for me would I use so it was more about my inputs or feedback 
was more about trying to question and trying to be part of those discussions uh, and try to be like, um, you know, give my feedback from like, for example, uh, I said, like, if I would be not part of defining those pipelines, I would not know what uh, what kind of test they are they are having already and what kind of test I would like to add. And um, I would like to see what kind of reports I would see. So I think it was all about me trying to be more uh, valuable as being part of like every set of decisions being made to understand the context and also give my feedback in terms of not just in terms of uh, questioning trying to understand the tools and trying to collaborate with the whole team and trying to make sure like uh, we are not forgetting like we have to collaborate so i think it was all about being like uh, uh, not just advocate from the testing point of view but also from like collaboration and uh, questioning point of view absolutely i mean as a tester i think you played a very important role of nudging them to do more critical thinking and get into more insights. Yeah. So, great. Um, next question here is, what level of programming did you know for static code analysis? Was it sufficient? Um, I just, uh, I knew basic understanding of programming language, which I could uh, read or write simple uh, web driver scripts for myself. Like, you know, I, I, I was, I was, or I am not an expert in uh, programming language, but in terms of static code analysis, I think I would see the reports and like, for example, like um, uh, my ma main aim from static code analysis was to see the report and see what is the unit test coverage. Like, I know, like, if you say 80, I want some 80% of coverage, they will give me um, uh, those code coverage and I could see there are no code smells or there are no uh, repeatable methods in it, like how well the code is being written. So I think I would mostly see from that point of view and it was not something like I would see each day. It would, I would try to see maybe uh, once in a couple of days and see the, uh, I would see the graph and it's kind of a monitoring uh, thing for me. It was kind of a monitoring thing for me. Is it coming down? Are the numbers going up or coming down? Just to see that. And we, it was like trying to push them, even though um, those numbers doesn't matter, but it is about trying to push them if they have, they literally had no code coverage for unit testing. So it was about getting that to a mark, even though um, it doesn't matter, but still it's good to have some kind of code coverage, like it, some 60% or 50% something to get that benchmark. So my, um, I would use, um, static code analysis in that way, but not exactly um, going through or reading the code or understanding that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. Like, I think it'll, it'll be helpful for testers to firstly mm -hmm. uh, know a tool like this, like SonarCube, and actually understand how to read it and its logs yeah. and understand to see the trends and patterns. And yeah. uh, this, even if you, don't, you're not interested in doing full-blown programming, uh, at least you yeah. know, learn to read and review the code that really helps. Yeah, I mean, that would give, I mean, slowly, like initially I didn't knew enough to on how, what uh, metrics I would get out of that, but slowly once you start to read that, I got into the point where I wanted to see the code, uh, where there are code smells or something. Why do we have these code smells? Like, are these co uh, methods not been written properly or are they repeated methods? So something like this, like going, covering initially and then going beyond like deep diving into those reports. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, your last question, Parveen, for today is, you mentioned improving observability. What did you mean by that? And why did you want to do that? This is something very new I came across uh, from uh, recently. I, I got this interest recently, which I wanted to implement. That's the reason why I said this is my part of future vision, which I really want to do. I heard this from Abby Banksner, who is part of Twitter. She does, she does a lot. She talks a lot about observability. So I started to learn about this. It is about um, trying to see this, like trying to see the system from outside and trying to understand what's going beyond. I might not giving be giving you the right definition, but I have a lot of interest in understanding this because we have a lot of services like the, the product which I'm working on. We have 
a few services. So the, I came across this term and I wanted to understand what this is and how I can use this. So this is my initial re research and uh, interest. So I might go beyond and I might share uh, how I approached or what did I use once I learn a bit better from uh, people around. So, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Parveen. Um, again, it was a very in insightful session. Thank you for uh, responding to all of our questions. I'm sure our attendees found it very informative and useful too. So thanks again, Parveen, and I really hope to see you at STPCon soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for joining this session. Well, everyone, this concludes our webinar for today. And thanks for joining and more importantly, more importantly, thank you for being engaging and making the most of the webinar for yourself and for the whole group. And if you want to see more ses sessions from speakers like Parveen and wish to learn more about testing, do join us at STPCon Spring 2020. The keynotes and workshops have been published. Have a look at the same. The complete program will be announced soon. Stay on a lookout at stpcon.com. Do not forget to grab your discounts since the Black Friday sales are on um, for two more weeks until 2nd of December. Again, at any point, should you have queries on registrations, do email them to info at softwaretestpro.com. Also, let me remind you, call for submissions for the webinars for the year 2020 is now open and will be open all year round. Please do send in your proposals ASAP to pick the slots of your choice. Stay tuned for more webinars uh, at softwaretestpro.com. We have an upcoming webinar which is Making Products That Matter, Value-Driven Development in Practice on 11th of uh, December. The speaker is Marcel Quackernack, who is a QA, Agile and DevOps consultant at Shell. In this talk, he will discuss how value-driven teams operate and build products that will actually get used. If the topic interests you, please do sign up for the same at softwaretestpro.com. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week ahead. See you all in San Diego in March next year. Keep practicing your testing skills.